Hello, I'm Charlotte Robinson. I'm a straight transgender woman and I work for Interengineering where I'm the co-chair of the Midlands region. When I studied at university I didn't really identify that much as an LGBT person. Um, I kind of assumed that I was a straight cisgender man on the basis that I didn't have any kind of strong feelings that I wasn't. Leading up to that point I'd always felt quite uncomfortable um, as a man and I hadn't really got much of an opinion on kind of sexuality or gender identity. It was only really within the third year of my uh, degree that I started experimenting at all with um, my gender identity and I suppose my sexuality to an extent as well. Up, up to that point I'd kind of identified as heterosexual but I suppose really it was more asexual. Um, it was a point where I kind of identified as, as bisexual at a time but that was that was very um, brief kind of I wasn't interested in either men or women so was I maybe bisexual. It was it was only really after I left university that I came out as, as fully being transgender. Um, one thing that does stick in my mind though was um, we went to a gay bar once, one of my friends took me to a gay bar and it was a very uncomfortable experience. Um, I went to university in Sheffield and when you go to Sheffield there's, and there's a, one or two gay men dancing in a, in a gay bar in the mid middle of the week, it's quite an odd experience, especially if you identify as, as straight or, or really don't have an opinion either way on your kind of sexuality and gender identity so that was quite an uncomfortable experience I suppose it was a little bit uncomfortable because I knew that I wasn't kind of cishet but I didn't really understand why or how I wasn't so it was it was something that I kind of struggled with a bit and I was trying to come to terms with that. At the end of my third year of university I went out and did a um, an internship with a com small company in Derby. There was certainly very little LGBT diversity within the company, um, but there was some LGBT com diversity within the companies surrounding uh, surrounding that company. And there was quite a few kind of disparaging remarks that were made, which kind of was very demoralising, I suppose. Um, and so I felt that I couldn't transition within that company, I couldn't come out to people and say actually you know what, I am trans and I want to transition. Um, and after a year I decided not to go back to university, I decided to go out and get a, a proper job, a full time job rather than, rather than an internship and, and go out and to get a, a job in, um, in engineering and, and railway engineering is, is what I was working in and what I still work in today. And I went to a I went to a bigger company in Birmingham um, that um, operates trains and maintains trains. And I went out and almost started working in a railway depot. And I was a little bit nervous at first because obviously if you're working in an office and people are quite um, disparaging towards LGBT people and then you move out into a, onto the shop floor onto a, um, a company that that predominantly works with um, the maintenance of trains there's a lot of the people are kind of less educated they've not been exposed to to university and the kind of the liberalism that you'd expect people to have at university so I was expecting it to be a bit harder but I knew that I'd have to go in and I knew that I'd have to, I had to transition. I waited about 10 weeks until my probation had nearly elapsed and I had a meeting with the engineering director and I went in and, and said to him, you know, I had a normal meeting and just a very general things that he wanted me to do, things that, how is it going and, and then it got to the end of the meeting and I, I'd kind of I'd had meetings with him before and, and always regretted walking out and not having said, actually I want to transition. 
and it got to the end of the meeting and he said, is there anything you want to discuss? And I said, yeah, I, I want to transition. And he said, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean by transition? And that was just such a, it felt like a bit of a kick in the teeth really because it was, it had taken so much effort to get it out at all that I said, I want to transition. And then suddenly, I found myself explaining and saying, look, I'm transgender. And I want to live the rest of my life as a woman. And I could kind of, I could see on his face that he was a bit shocked. But he was very supportive and he passed it on to HR. And HR eventually kind of got back to me. It seemed to take quite a long time for that to happen. But um, they got back to me and, and they said, well, what do you want us to do? And we, we discussed it. and. Um, six months later, having had a lot of meetings with HR, and I can only really say that HR has, has been a really, really positive experience with them. Um, they, six months later, I transitioned at work, which was about three months ago, just under three months ago, that I transitioned. So, um, it's, that was a really positive experience. And I was expecting people to be very disparaging again because obviously it's not just trans people. At my old company it was trans people that you saw around and about who worked for suppliers, who worked for clients. And it was coming back and you were saying, well, um, they're, 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 there were some disparaging remarks and these were from people who mainly got degrees and had with charter engineers and to suddenly walk into a, a depot environment where everyone was technician trained, they'd done their apprenticeships, they'd, they'd not been exposed so much to, a, to the liberal atmosphere of university. To be more accepted by them was quite a strange feeling but everyone has accepted it really, really positively. Um, from the, the, the cleaners and the labourers on the shop floor to, to the management, they've all been really positive about it. I think the most challenging aspect was probably the logistics of it. I knew that if I, if I went in from it from nothing and one day everyone knew me as a man and then suddenly I was going in and as a woman then it would be a problem. So I tried to limit that and I tried to, to stagger what I did as a man and as a woman. And I started off doing social things as a woman while I was doing everything else as a man and then I started off uh, and then I started working from there. I started moving towards a um, doing more professional things. So that's when I joined into engineering. I joined into engineering and actually became the co-chair of the Midlands region before I transitioned at work. And that gave me a really good, positive kind of stepping stone into transitioning at work, I feel. Because it was something that I managed to do. Um, it was something that it was something that I did and I started getting the experience of presenting as as a woman, presenting as myself in a professional environment. And then I did various other things and there was a point just before I transitioned where I was working as a man but then I was I was leaving work and three days a week I'd be going and, and, and getting changed and presenting as a woman to go and um, and do professional things such as into engineering and visiting other LGBT groups. And then, so that the logistics of coming out of work and getting changed and going back as a woman was, was really difficult. And there was also a slight fear as well that someone had kind of meet me I'd, or I'd meet someone that I knew but who didn't know that I was trans. And I'd, you know, come out of work, get changed, go somewhere and bump into someone and they'd say, oh, I know you. I was working with you, you were a man two hours ago. So there's obviously the worry about that. So it's really, having transitioned at work, um, 
I had no issues at all with the people that I work with, but I was, it was just so difficult to live a double life because that's how it felt to me. It felt like it was a double life that I was living partly as a man and mainly as a woman. And now I feel that I can live my whole life authentically as a woman. So when I transitioned at work, I noticed that there was another massive boost in confidence for me uh, because it was just such such a big thing to to have um, to have done to have transitioned and, and for suddenly everyone being very accepting of who I was was a, was another massive confidence piece. Really, the main piece of advice I'd say is to be yourself. Because, as I've said earlier, it was such a massive boost to my confidence. It was such a massive boost to my um, professional capability, I suppose, because that confidence allowed me to ask the questions and, and do engineering as I suppose it should be done. So my main piece of advice is to come out and not to be scared about coming out at work because Everyone that I've met has been to a, to a person, they've been amazing about it. They've given me so much more support, they've been so much more friendly than when I was kind of having a veil over who I was. I think the most important thing about choosing engineering as a career is making sure that that's what you want to do. Um, I went into engineering because I have a passion for for making the world a better place. That's why I went into engineering. I, I want to make the world a much better place um, by changing systems and changing physical objects to make, to change and to improve things. And that was really what drove me into engineering and that's still what drives me today.